One of the fuzzing tools I like to use is a mutation-based fuzzer called Redamsum. And what that means is that it generates test cases based on input that you provide it. And this can be quite interesting because you can provide it input of different types of structured data and it will mutate those in very interesting ways. So it's a good uh, tool that you can use to test uh, parsers or other, type, uh, or other types of validators where you have some type of unique structure of your, your data that you need to validate uh, rigorously to prevent any type of security issue. Now, Redamza is a command line tool that you will have to compile um, locally on your machine. Uh, so if you want to use it to send payloads to some web application, it's generally best to either find a tool that you can integrate it with, which we will be looking at in another video, or you can generate a large number of test cases in a Word file and then use something, uh, in a, sorry, in a text file, and then use something like Burps Intruder or uh, some type of um, web fuzzing tool like WFuzz or Fuff to send those payloads to the application. In this case, we're just going to look at payload generation with Redamza uh, so that you can see what it does. So in this case, I'm just echoing uh, test to Redamza and it's going to take that and it's going to mutate it in hopefully an interesting way. In this case, it uh, essentially duplicated our, our content and, and put uh, uh, test uh, again on a new line. But if we run it again, we get something different. Now, um, it's not guaranteed to create unique test cases. Um, it is ultimately a deterministic tool that uh, depends on you know finite uh, inputs. Uh, however, even across a very large number of, um, of runs, it produces really neat, unique and, and different uh, responses. So I'd recommend taking a look at how it modifies uh, different structures of data. So in this case, we just have the word test, but we can also use um, a JSON object as in, as input here. So I just have uh, test as a key and then value as a, as a value. And I have immediately realized my issue here in using double quotes. So I'm just going to encapsulate the payload in single quotes here. And now it can act on our test case. And you can see that it's mutating it in very interesting ways that could be quite troublesome for parsers. <laughs> in particular, uh, inputs like this where uh, it adds uh, a very large um, string into the, uh, in, in this case, the name of the key. Um, I think it's interesting just to experiment with it on the command line. Uh, to even give you some inspiration for some payloads that you could create and, and test with for different types of structured data. But ultimately, I think it'll perform best when you create a very large data set from it and you send that to an application and just see how the application processes that. That is ultimately the end goal of fuzzing to see what type of behavior from our application we can coerce out of it by sending these you know, malformed and unexpected inputs.